Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a little bit of an assembly series or uh, in-depth series on building a rook. I'm building a second rook. I want to go over a little bit of the build process and that type of thing and answer some questions and hopefully provide just a little bit more detail with people who are interested in building the rook, um, that type of thing. So. You can uh, kind of see here the color scheme that I'm going with for my new build. This is um, Sparta 3D in Canada. This is their Sparkle PLA in purple. Very, very nice color, really happy with it. And I'm also printing the frame, at least the top and the bottom frame, out of um, Sparkle PETG Plus. So this is Obsidian Black. I printed it on my X1. Um, probably faster than I should, but it works just fine. I printed it at like 200 millimeters a second or whatever the X1 standard speed is, and it turned out great. No stringing or anything like that. Really neat filaments. Um, I have some Sparkle Blue um, PLA as well. That's going to be for another project that's coming up. But I wanted to just kind of go through a bit more detail on um, assembling it, this frame, um, try to answer some questions I've been seeing on the Discord and that type of thing. So this is a um, little bit of a polished version of the base that I've made. So this is the stock Rook base. And I've actually just cleaned it up a little bit, added some fillets and chamfers and things like that, made it a little bit nicer. I also added some tabs here on the frame for a basic mainboard mounting solution. Um, you should be able to relatively easy make a, a tray for most mainboards. This is an SKR3, which I already had. So I just made a, a tray for an SKR3, but you could basically make a bracket for any small size mainboard, like a Pico or an SKR Mini E3 or something like that. So I will uh, put this on GitHub, this frame. Um, updated design, I guess, uh, for this. Just note that this is the stock version of the Rook frame. This is my iteration of the Rook frame. I am using um, a member on my Discord, uh, Gulsifer. He designed these uh, feet. They have the little Rook logo in there. You can kind of see a little bit. I like these feet because they don't have uh, anything that sticks out like a corner here. So when I rounded off these, um, this frame, it looks really clean, it looks really sleek. I am actually also using pretty short motors here. I think these are like 34 millimeters uh, tall and I'm not actually going to even run any rubber feet. Again, simplify it, make the printer look a little bit sleeker. I'm just going to put some VHB tape on the bottom here and this printer is basically going to be stationary on my desk right beside me. And that's what the Rook is really intended for. It's intended for a Small little printer, you can just spin off parts really fast, like a little thing here and there. Um, it's meant for people to get into Core XY printers really cheaply. It's meant for people to learn Clipper. Um, I, for this Rook, I am actually gonna try RepRap firmware. I've tried it before on an Ender 3 that I bought on Facebook that came with like a Duet clone board. But uh, like I said, I have this SKR3 mainboard. I have ordered a Wi-Fi module for it, so I ordered the Big Tree Tech ESP32. So this will have Wi-Fi and I can run RepRap firmware on here. I don't need another device for this. I kind of forget to keep mentioning that in my other videos. You will need another piece of hardware to run the Rook if you're using Clipper. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi or a laptop or desktop that runs Clipper. I usually take that for a... Um, take advantage, um, or I take that for, um, I know people don't have like a laptop that's just running Clipper and that's what I use for all my machines. So I don't normally factor the cost of a Pi or Clipper device into my bill of materials because I have a laptop that runs Clipper, four versions of Clipper or four instances of Clipper on it and I can run as many printers as I want for the most part. So I never factor the cost of a Pi or an Orange Pi Zero or that into my build. So just do note, if you're building the Rook from scratch, you will need some way to run Clipper. Um, 
If this RepRap firmware works out, I will post the config for it also on GitHub. It'll be another option for people if they just want to get into this really cheap and as a standalone build. So that is an option there as well. Um, as I mentioned before, I printed this frame out in PETG and the frame is very, very solid. It's really, really good. And I didn't go crazy here. I did three walls, 15% infill. I went really, really simple, um, not that strong at all, and I'm very happy with the strength of the frame. Um, if you're going with PTG, again, you could err a little bit on the side of caution, uh, go to 20, 25% or something like that would be okay. But the bottom line is don't be afraid to try materials and infills and settings. Um, at the end of the day, you might be out a couple of hours of print time. Truthfully, these parts don't take up a whole lot of filaments. Um, and you can print this whole printer out of PLA if you want to. Um, these feet here are PLA. My bed frame is going to be PLA. I'm using PTG because I wanted some different colors and I, I just had black in PTG only. Um, if you want to print ABS or ASA or PLA plus, give it a try, especially for the smaller parts, parts like this. If you're going to print a part like this in PTG, that's completely fine. Uh, I would definitely up um, up the infill a little bit to like 30% or 35% if you're going to print out uh, a part like this, like a motor mount, but it, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't work fine. This is PLA, three walls, again, 15% infill, and it's perfectly solid. Um, if you're worried about the motors getting too warm and stuff like that, my PLA Pro has been handling it fine, but you could print just this part in... Uh, ABS or PTG if you wanted to, if you wanted a bit more heat resistance, but this should be okay. Um, I've been running it on my orange Rook for a while in PLA Pro and it's been totally fine. This isn't the exact order that you would normally build the Rick, Rook in. Uh, generally what you would do is you would put on your collars first, your Z um, lead screw collars on the motors first, and then you would attach the motors to the frame. Before all that, you would put your linear rods in. So these are press fit. They fit in nice and tight. You can tap them in a little bit. These holes do not go all the way through the frame, and that is intentional, so that each rod can actually sit in the same position, and it's very easy to get them nice and um, level with each other. So press the rods in first. That's the very first step. Attach your uh, lead screw collars to your Z motors, and then attach the motors to the frame. Then you can attach the feet. The feet here are just held in with M5 by 10 bolts. There's no nuts or anything. They just thread right into the plastic. They're just for the feet. That's completely fine. And then on the bill of materials, I do have some rubber like a feet. You can get them on Amazon or AliExpress. But because I'm using the shorter motors, I'm just going to completely circumvent that and not worry about it. I'm just going to run some double-sided tape on the bottom for feet. Anything I kind of had laying around, it's... Um, it just saves a little bit of extra hardware and a little bit of rubber feet and stuff like that. So, but um, yeah, this is kind of like just a first example of the assembly process and um, some things that I've been thinking about for the Rook and whatnot. Uh, like I say, I'll put the uh, updated version of the base on the GitHub. Um, if you're going with some mods that are on Discord or on GitHub, definitely... Um, Ask questions, do your research, and make sure the mods will work for you. I know Gulsifer's feet will work for his base, my base, that type of thing. But if you're going with, for instance, the 10 millimeter diameter rods, you're going to have to use Gulsifer's base, bed frame, and top frame. So make sure that you're going with the right mods first. There's a lot of people on the Discord that are building mods and designing. If... Um, you're interested in like a bigger rook or other iterations and like some, something like that people are already talking about that kind of stuff so jump on the discord and ask them ask some questions that type of thing um don't be afraid to try things out this is a cheap printer it's very easy to reprint parts um this printer was designed to be the absolute cheapest possible printer you can imagine and that's why i made the frame one piece the whole idea is to get the most strength possible out of a 3D printed part by making it a singular piece. 
and also being able to print on an Ender 3. Um, it is a little bit of a torture test, I will be honest, for um, an Ender machine and stuff like that. You are very close to maxing the build area, so you do have to have your settings dialed in, um, make sure you're printing uh, properly so you don't have any warping and that type of thing, but don't be afraid to print slower or turn your infill down just a little bit will help or print with a hotter bed. Um, I'll print with 65 degrees on my PLA printer sometimes just so I ensure that I'm not um, warping. I will use a brim if, if possible. You know, try as many things as possible to ensure that these larger frame pieces are going to print. And like I say, I printed this at three walls, 15% infill on the bottom, and I'm very happy with its strength. It's quite solid. Um, this printer is not meant to be an absolute speed demon. I'm sure it's very capable. I've definitely done some 15 minute benchies now, I believe, um, if I can find it here. So this, this is a 15 minute and like 50 second benchy that I did. Um, you can see obviously I'm printing super fast, like the stack here is a little bit um, deformed from heat, but in all honesty, for my really crappy duct uh, on the back of the printer that's not even directed properly, this is pretty impressive for PLA, for a 15, under 16 minute benchy. Like honestly, this is quite, I'm quite happy with this. And again, I never designed this printer to compete with like a V0 or anything like that. It's just a printer so that people can think outside of the box more, try different things, go crazy with this build, build the brook that you want. Um, design whatever rook you want. If you want to cut the frame up and make it larger, go for it. Um, you don't know until you try, and uh, you can always go back to building the original rook. The parts are basically going to be the same, so um, it's nice to experiment and get people thinking of different ways to make a rook and different different types of designs and stuff like that. And I really, really do encourage everyone to join the Discord. Take a look, look at the Rook channel and just have fun. Um, I'm definitely on there as much as I possibly can be and uh, try to be on there and answer questions and that type of thing. So I'll be making more videos of this printer. This is just part one, just talking about the base frame here, the Z, that type of thing. Um, just as a note, the th screws here are M3 by 20 or M3 by 18 will work as well. So M3 by 20 or M3 by 18. Um, these screws here for holding on the actual um, main board here, they're M3 by 12, again, M5 by 10. Um, there's not very many M3 screws on this printer. And if you're worried about heat creep and stuff like that, or I shouldn't say heat creep, but creep with PLA, there's very few M3 bolts that are threaded in or butt up with PLA for them to creep. The linear rails are all heat inserts and they're sandwiched in between the actual rail surface. There's no creeping that's gonna happen there. Um, even if you have some heat creep or some cr cold creep issues with PLA on the motor mounts, these are a very simple print to print out in PETG or ASA or ABS probably, even on a printer that's not enclosed. If you print slow, don't go crazy on the infill and stuff like that. This isn't a huge part. It should be totally fine on most printers. So again, thanks for everyone watching. Really appreciate all the interest in the Rook. It's uh, my channel has like gained a thousand subscribers easiest, easy since I've put the Rook out. And I'm very excited to see all the iterations and um, issue serial numbers and stuff like that for the Rook. So again, thanks everyone. Uh, comment below. Definitely feel free to join the Discord.